Welcome to a new Dave's Workshop Tours video and as you can see I'm back at the Derby Works with Greg. Last time we were in the workshop and if you haven't seen that click the link above for part one of this visit. This time however we're next door where a number of customer cars are garaged either for storage or awaiting their turn in the workshop. So sit back and enjoy Greg's wonderful tour. This particular car is a 25 horsepower Rolls Royce. Yeah. It is utterly original. Paintwork, interior, Crikey. it's never been restored. It's done, I think, 60 odd thousand miles from new. So it's 60,000 miles in 85 years. <laughs> and remember that before the war, Rolls Royce didn't make a complete car. Yes, of course. So this, like all the other, pre-war Rolls Royce it has its own coach built body. The fascinating thing about this one is it's a Windover's body built for Lionel Windover himself. So it comes with a number of unique features okay. which you'd imagine the owner of a coach building firm would want incorporated in, his, uh, in, in the car. So for example, I'll, if you look at the door handles. Mm -hmm. So Windover's is where? Windover's, I'll tell you. Windover's... So that's not a name we immediately comes to mind, of course. Windover's the... of London. There we are. Right. Coach work by Windover's of London. Oh, right. It's not a name that immediately comes to mind for the oh, occasional... Oh, yes. Uh... It, it, it was, it was a, certainly a well-known and, and yeah. uh, popularly, popularly supported coach builder. Yeah. Now, look at that interior. Oh, my Lord. Crikey. Can I, uh... They are the original overrugs. Yeah, gee. Oh. And you can tell that the car's never been restored because it's never been a part. Mm -hmm. And this shows, how's that? <laughs> That's how you know when a car's yeah. not, never ever been a part. And naturally there are, the car has door locks, but come and look at this. I've just got to find it. The door lock, oh I beg your pardon, it's on the other side. Come on, I'll show you. That's right. So the door locks for the car are there, concealed inside the handle. So there's a special key, as you can see. Couldn't quite meet the safety requirements in today's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and the same on the front. So if it, there's no locks on the other side. That's right. And that was because Henry Royce didn't like people entering from the driver's side. That's why he put the gear lever on, on the right-hand side. What's, what, what problem? Well, he didn't want the, 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 the risk of a, pa of a driver uh, being hit by a car going past by getting it on the driver's side. Oh, right, okay, yeah. And so that, that's why the levers were placed on that side yeah. to yeah. encourage people to get in to, uh, the car from the side of the footpath. Yes. But the, so the car's bristling with wonderful period features like that. Yes. That you just don't see on other cars. Yeah, sure, sure. Anything so, else? That, yeah, Mr. Windover. Oh, <laughs> where do I start? Had for himself. Come, come around here and I'll mm -hmm. enter from the other side mm -hmm. and I'll show you the first radio Ooh. that I've seen. Okay, I don't want to, that's going against rubber, that's okay. Now, as you can see, the car has a division. Yeah. And hidden under this flap is the radio. Oh, my Lord. It starts and works. I, I don't think that the antenna's connected. There we go. Yeah, that's crazy. What a wonderful thing. I've never seen one in a car yeah. of this age. And here, That's... you can see there's a speaking trumpet. <laughs> so that's for the chauffeur. Focus on there. Yeah. There's your speaking trumpet. And you can see there's a microphone in the rear, which we'll have a look at it shortly, on the passenger side. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Let so, me, uh, let's just back to that radio. So what year is this? 1935. Okay. 
I had a 1935 Rolls Royce myself in pretty much the same original condition. Mine had done a few more miles. Mine had done 105,000 miles from you, yeah. and yeah. was also utterly original. And you only got one station back in those days. <laughs> yes, BBC yeah. Home Service. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. So you can. Cool. So what you're looking at is the car which was still in the precisely the same condition as delivered to Lionel Windover uh -huh. in 1935. Yeah. Carpets, seats. Exterior paint, the blinds, mm. silk blinds, <laughs> the lot. How many coach builders were were there? In oh, there the were prison? a lot. There, yeah. there were at least at least twenty in the UK alone. Yeah. There were the big the, the big ones were of course, uh, Hooper, Barker, Marner, uh, Park Ward. Yeah. But there was a whole tier of very popular coach builders apart from them, such as and Windovers was one of, one of that tier. Were there any chassis just sent out to, to Australia? Oh, yes, first? to Martin and King, whose premises were in High Street, Armadale. And I had the good luck, the great good luck when I was in real estate, of meeting Bill King himself, who was the principal of Martin and King. And I met him in 1981. Mm. And he told me, we had a, a, a very pleasant time together, we, he told me about the, the wonderful times when he'd receive a cheque from Rolls-Royce Limited, mm -hmm. or the chassis would arrive with reams of instructions for how to fix the coachwork, because there were weight limitations and all this sort of thing, sure. because if you didn't uh, erect a body and fit it to their instructions, you could void the warranty. Right. So naturally, great care was taken. Yeah. There was also a very healthy market here in Australia for uh, Rolls-Royce and Bentley cars, which would be shipped out without their bodies on, which were not new. And right. Silver Ghosts, Phantom Ones and what have you, and they'd arrive in Australia in the 1930s and be rebodied right. and put back into use with, with a, a modern body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, saved a massive amount of duty because sure. if the duty of, on a, a car arriving from overseas with its body was far, far more punitive than the duty on just the chassis alone. Sure, sure. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful stuff. So let's adjourn to the, the rear compartment. Oh, by the way, there's this little, little feature here. Oop. It's called a quick lift. Let me just... Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And these louvers on all the windows were a, another uh, very, very good fitting too because they were fitted to my 2025 as well and they completely eliminate any buffeting when you have the window down. Right, yeah. Wonderful. That lovely noise of... Wonderful sound. ...when you, you close the door. I'll uh, do it on this side. Crikey. Yeah. I come in this from this side, yeah? Yes. Okay. Now, if you care to take a seat in here. Mm. You should, with, with shoes on? Yes. They're clean. Oh my. Let's, uh, I don't want... You're on. almost there. I'll just, I'll just uh, pretend yeah, I'll here's the bum in this the... door. I don't want it bashing into anything. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh my gosh, yeah. Now, oh. the, the, the first thing to notice, A, is how comfortable it is, mm. but B, you will, if you look at the ceiling, you'll see there's a, a, it's, it's a raised section above your head so that you didn't have to take your hat off. Yeah. <laughs> Even for six foot four? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not sure a top hat. I'd get on with a top hat, would I? Yes. Yeah, there, yeah. There, there is your microphone for delivering instructions to oh, the yeah. chauffeur. Yeah. Let me just uh, uh, turn this off a second. I need to yeah. bring the light on. Oh, there we go. Okay, right, just again, oh, there's the, uh, you yeah, know, this raised section for the, the top hat wearer. Yes. So and in here you, you there. have ashtray and there's a vanity light there. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, crap. Oh, is that crystal? A bit of crystal over here, Greg. And that is there, a, a, a cigar lighter. Can I pull it yes, out? Yes, pull it out. Oh, my lordy. Oh my gosh, and it's still in here. Yep. That's crazy. 
It's, well, the interesting thing, of course, is that the percentage increase in price of these accessories is far in excess of the percentage increase in price of the entire car over, over the years. Yeah. Because more and more people have said, I want to return the car that I've bought mm -hmm. to one which has been exactly as delivered to the first owner. So then the hunt is on for the toolkit tools, yeah. accessories like this. Yeah. And so they've, they've gone through the roof in value. And see, it no, looks no, like it's never been used. Look at the condition of it. Well, I think quite the, uh, extraordinary. The, the, I think he did. There's a few cigars been lit on that. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm just hold it. Yeah, I'm just imagining. Well, actually, you'd think there still might be an aroma <laughs> of a cigar or two, but this doesn't seem to be. That's crazy. Blimey. Now, you isn't that like... seat that you're sitting in wonderfully it's, comfortable? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I could get used to this. And. This here is the speaker for the radio. Oh, yeah. So the chauffeur puts the, the, turns the radio on for you when you tell him to. Yeah. Selects the BBC Home Service BBC if that's what you does. want, and it comes out through here. Yeah. So you've got two, two little compartments here and here for, for whatever. Yeah. What would it, that was? Yeah. Is it, is that, what, what wood is that, do you think? That's a, is that an oak? I don't, I don't know my timbers as well as I should, I'm afraid to say. It's, it's even That's lockable. Lockable, yeah. Yeah. Now, one of the challenges with erecting a formal body without it being huge and, and, and long, and therefore thereby affecting the car's performance, is a formal body by definition has a division as you can see here. Now, you wind the division up, but look at this, look how it's angled. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. quite an extraordinary mechanism. Yes. Because that's why you've got, instead of the, the vision, oh, yeah, yeah, division yeah. dropping vertically, then you wouldn't have any room for your feet. Sure. So by angling it, as you can see coming up, now watch what happens as you get oh, close to the top. I just have a feeling what's gonna, yeah, yeah. Still coming out now, in it comes. Oh, Look at my that. Lord. Oh my lord. Hang on. Drop again, please. No, there, it's okay. And I then didn't, I didn't, now, didn't quite now get... I'll lower it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So lowering it, you see it's vertical. Yeah, now yeah, it's yeah. coming oh. out and sliding down at an angle. This is 19. Ima imagine what, what, devising what, what, this in 1935. 1935. Crikey. I'd read about it, but I'd never actually seen it. That's it's sad. just amazing. Yeah. I'd love to see the mechanism inside. Yeah, fabulous, isn't it? Yeah. So that's why you've got leg room yeah. in a formal car that's yeah. not enormously long. Yeah. That is stunning. That is stunning. So you can keep your modern cars as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> These really are works of art, aren't they? They certainly are. Then, of course, you've got your lovely satin blinds. Mm -hmm. I won't pull them no, down. No, I can They're imagine. They're spring-loaded. Yeah. And that's why they have that cord there. You pull on the cord, just like a normal Holland blind. So it's a Holland blind construction. Pull on the cord, blind comes down, pull again, and the spring-loading uh, lifts the, the blind back up again. Oh, gosh. And, and to, sit, to think that you're sitting I'm... on these wonderful mohair overrugs, yeah. that were put in the car back in 1935. Yeah. And they're still giving service today, as, as, yeah. as is the seat that you're sitting on. This, yeah. Now, I would suspect, if you look here, there are fasteners. Oh, yeah. And I would say that the car originally had a linen covering, which was fastened across here and went down there just for the, so the chauffeur to sit on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. about all I can show you, I think. In the... that's, uh, oh, one thing. more thing here. Right. You can't see it, but it's concealed there. Oh, yeah. There is your rear blind. You can see the cords coming up. Yeah. And that's operated from here. So you push that forward and the rear blind comes up. Now, one of the interesting things about what you've seen in this car is that so many of these features were incorporated 
in the first complete car made by Rolls-Royce uh, uh, in 1946, which was the Mark VI Bentley. And that standard car, as it was called, the standard steel saloon, incorporated a number of these features, such as the vanity, mm -hmm. the rear blind, the cigar lighters, etc., etc., because they had to compete against these coach yeah, builders. Yeah. So if they couldn't offer the same refinements, yeah. they weren't going to sell cars. Sure. And this, of course, because Rolls-Royce took this, this path, that spelt then the end of the coach builders. Right. Because okay, yeah. you had to pay two or three thousand pounds premium for their work, whereas you could buy the standard one off the, the, the floor at Rolls-Royce and it had all these features incorporated. Sure, sure. But is anybody else doing this uh, this glass in that, that manner? You've mm. never seen a... No, that, I think that's a patented mechanism. So in other words, it, I don't think it was, it was Windover's um, sole um, uh, providence, as it were. Yeah. I think it was available for any coach builder right. who wanted to pay for the, the, you know, the, the patented Usage, mechanism. Right. Oh, okay. Do you know... We don't know who's developed that. Huh? No, we don't. Yeah. And that's just the, 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 the that's the bottom edge of the speaker for the, the oh, radio, yeah, yeah, just yeah. Per poking out. You had a choice of a standing or a kneeling mascot. Really? Yes. From factory. From factory. Crikey. And you are a uh, a fountain. Oh, <laughs> only because it's been my <laughs> hobby for. Half a century now, yeah, so unbelievable. You, I'm, a bit, you know, I'm pretty familiar with it. And so, up until what what year did you could you have that choice? It it, it started in the mid '30s, a couple of years before this, and was available up until the um, World War Two. Right. But you also notice on, on the that the green silver dawn that's just departed. Yeah. That's also had a kneeling mascot. I'm sure the camera caught that, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll just Stunning. show you the engine because, okay. like yeah. the rest of the car, Ooh. you just turn it sideways so that the bonnet doesn't foul yeah. the wings. And they all do that? Yes. So yeah. you'll see here too, if you say, why are the, these chrome dots there? Yeah. That's because you won't damage the paintwork because when you raise it, Ah, it's supported it just sit on there, like so. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So under the bonnet, everything's here as it should be. So first of all, you've got the crank handle in, in two parts. That's the first, that's, that's the, the shaft, yeah. and there's the handle. It fit them together to crank the car. Yeah. Secondly, this is the wheel brace. Yes. And you, you use that. You see, they, they have qu quite special mm -hmm. uh, hubs, specially designed hubs. Yep. You, you remove. Third is your hammer. Your mallet. Oh, is that rubber on the end? Or? Yes, there's yeah, rubber yeah. on the end. It's called a molten, M-O-U-L-T-O-N. Molten mm -hmm. was the manufacturer, the molten hammer. Mm -hmm. And once you'd tightened it up as far as you could, you then whacked. Yep. That's why these, the edges are flattened yes, yes. from being Give me a good old whack. Ha hammered, yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There we go. Now, also, you'll see here is that is the. Oh, that's right. Yes, you're going to love this. That and this contraption here are fitted together, and it has a built-in jacking system. Oh, don't give me that. Yes. Well, you're sorry you asked, aren't you? So anyway. <laughs> Um, no, what not, you do, you, there's a rod. Flabbergasted. There, there's a rod at, um, on each side of the car at the front, rods at each side of the car on the, on the, at the rear. You fit the, the, ha the rod and socket onto the end of the, the, the shaft, put the handle on, and wind the car up. Great. And these are all the things that disappear over the years. Yeah. Down here, for example, you can see... Well, and then reappear. Uh, on, <laughs> at, at a massive... At a <laughs> on sports cars. In Le Mans well, I'll tell or... you, when I bought the, my 25 horsepower Rolls-Royce, it was terrific in terms of its originality and condition, but some of the tools were missing. Mm -hmm. And 
I, I, I couldn't tolerate that. I, I, I didn't relax until I managed to acquire every single item that came with the car originally. And so today, somewhere around the world, a man gets up, and as he looks in the mirror shaving, he's saying to himself, I should have bid more. Yeah. Because <laughs> I managed to buy the correct Rolls-Royce feeler gauges, and they are correct because they, they are stamped Rolls-Royce 25 horsepower for yeah. the toolkit. Yeah. Right. And in 2012, they cost me 260 pounds, mm -hmm. but I got them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they were the only set I ever saw for sale. Right. Wow. So I wonder if you're still looking. I'm still yeah. looking in the mirror and saying, I should have been more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here, the, the, all Rolls Royce cars, going all the way back to Silver Ghosts, were fitted with these aluminium under trays to stop mud and, and muck from getting thrown up under the car. Yeah. But they were very fiddly to fit yeah. and fiddly to remove Let me see. Let me as they had to be. So quite often, Lay down. Mechanics, would, mechanics would remove them and not put them back on because they figured the, the owners wouldn't notice. Yeah. So once again, these are all available for purchase at, at vast expense. Yes, I can imagine. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Now, in the boot is something else. Oh, and staying on the window. Yeah. Now, look at this. I don't I know there, where this comes from. So where, 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 window was in, in London, was it? Yes, it had the showrooms in London, but I don't know where the, 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 the factory, where right. they... So, here, I think this fits under the mat in the front floor, All but right. look at it and smell it. It's called Sorbo. Mm. Sorbo matting. Mm. I read about it but never seen it. All right, okay. Made from. Well, what do you think? <sighs> oh, I so reckon that's cotton. Yeah, that's cotton on top, isn't it? Yeah. Heavy duty cotton, and God only knows what's inside it. Mm. But you can feel it gives like rubber. Yeah. So it's probably got rubber in there, but it, it's, it was called, known as sorbo matting. That it came in that pieces like that. Yes, it, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. this wow. is exactly how it came. Wow. Excellent. Ooh. Stunning. As you can see, there's plenty more to look at, including the Silver Ghost Ute, but that will have to wait until next time. Before you go, please leave your comments below on anything you've seen and make sure you like, subscribe and share for more Dave's Workshop tours to come. And in the meantime, why don't you go back and watch both the videos from my first visit to the Derby Works.